Hey everybody, hope you're doing good. In this tutorial, I will show you how to create a button that triggers an animation on a 3D object in Spline. To make this work, we're gonna use states and events. So the first thing we're gonna do is just come up to this create new object plus button right here. So I'm gonna click plus and I'm gonna grab a rectangle, just draw out that rectangle to really any size that you want. And I'm gonna change the color over here to a gradient and let's do some different colors here. I'm gonna get this and just change the colors to just something a little bit different. Mm, yeah, just something like that. And what I can do is right over here on the right hand side is we have some different settings that we can change and one of them is corner. So I'm gonna just drag that all the way over and that will give us this kind of rounded corner rectangle here. And so the next thing I'm gonna do is come up here and I'm just going to create a text object and I'll just drag this out below. And I am just going to change the color so we can see this. And let's type in interactive. Of course you can just type whatever you want there and just click and I'm gonna just bring this over. And I wanna make this bigger. And the one thing I wanna do is click this little lock next to the scale and that will just lock the proportion. So when I scale this up, it doesn't get stretched. And I'll just move this over. And what I wanna do next is I want this, let's uh, bring this in a little bit actually. And what I wanna do is I wanna bring this text below this rectangle button. That way, if I wanna move the button around, it is parented to that button. And then the next thing I wanna do is come up here and create another object. And this is the object we're gonna use for our animation. And I just grabbed a torus knot and I'm just gonna drag that out. I'm gonna hold shift to constrain the proportions. And we can see that it has some faceting going on. And so what we need to do is up these segments. So I'm gonna come over here and change the path side so we have a little bit more smoothing. And I'm actually going to go above 100 because it still seems a little rough. And I wanna also change the color. I'm gonna to go to a gradient and I'm gonna click on the gradient and I'm just gonna choose two random colors here. So let's see, let's grab a purple and some kind of orange color. And we can see that it's got some kind of weird things happening there and that's because we're on linear. And if I go to smooth, that should smooth that out. And um, let's also do radial. Um, for the type and yeah, so that's looking pretty good and actually I might change this Orange to be a little bit darker something like that Okay, so what we need to do is we need to create some states for both of these objects to use So what I'm gonna do is click on the button and right over on the right hand side. We have states I'm gonna add a new state and Then I want to also tie this to an event. So I'm gonna click the plus sign for events and now we have a state and that's our change. And then what is gonna cause that change to happen is the event. So right now it's set to, the type is set to start and I wanna do a mouse hover. And so what happens when I do a mouse hover, um, will, it will get triggered whenever we're on this state. And right now these two are exactly the same, so nothing will happen. So what we need to do is go and change one of these and then we will have that happen when we do the mouse hover. So I'm gonna to go to the state, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scale this down. So I'm just gonna grab this, I'm gonna hold shift, I'm gonna scale it down a little bit. And so basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna go from the base state to this state when we have a mouse hover, and it'll look like we're interacting with this button. So I'm gonna click the play button just to see what happens, and there we go. And I move, move my mouse, goes back. So it's basically toggling between those two uh, states right here when we do the mouse hover. And we also have some controls here that we can change the duration and the easing. I actually like the easing, but the duration feels a little long. So I'm gonna change that down to 0.25. And let's check that out, see what that looks like. There we go. I like that. Of course, you could do whatever you think works the best for your project. Okay, so the next thing we wanna do is on this button, we have the button changing when we do a mouse hover, and what we want to do is trigger this object right here to do some kind of animation. And so I'm gonna come over to this torus right here, 
And we're also going to add a state for this. So that way we have a change that could take place. And instead of using an event on this actual object, what we're gonna do is use our button to trigger this event. But first we need to make whatever change we want to have happen on this torus knot right here. So I'm gonna change the rotation. So I think I wanna change this one. So right in the middle, the Y rotation. So I'm gonna just click on that and I'm gonna click 360. So we're gonna do 360 degree turn. And let's go back to our button. And what we wanna do is instead of creating a new event right here, what we wanna do is actually within this little event section, we could add new object to this event. So what we're gonna do is click that button. And now we have two events that are happening from this one um, type of action right here, which is our mouse hover. So right here, instead of changing the um, object state, what we wanna do is change the torus knot state. And then instead of the base state, we wanna do the state because that's our 360 degree turn. So let's check that out. And there we go. So now we have this button changing something on this object. So this is a really cool way of tying together one event with two different objects. So one other thing we could do to make this a little bit more fun is when we do the mouse hover, we can also change the color of this torus knot. So let's go back to the torus knot and on this state, let's click on our gradient and let's change the color of the gradient to something else. We'll change both of these sides here to something that looks obviously quite a bit different. And you can see if we go back to the base state, we still have our original color. And then on this state, we are all we're not only rotating this 360 degrees, but we're also changing the color here. So let's click play on that and we'll roll over and it changes the color. Pretty cool. Well, I hope this tutorial was helpful to you and have a great day.